ఇక్కడ మీరు వాటర్ ఫాల్స్ చూస్తున్నారు కదా ఆ రెండు కూడా డిఫరెంట్ వాల్కనీ కేజెస్ తోటి రిలేట్ అయి ఉన్నాయి మొదటి ఫాల్ ప్రవాహం కొంచెం ఎక్కువగా ఉంది కదా అది ఫస్ట్ ఏజ్ రెండో దాంది కొంచెం తక్కువ ప్రవాహం అది సెకండ్ ఏజ్ అనమాట అల్లంత దూరాన ఉన్న ఆ జాలువారే నీటి హొయ్యలు మనసును ఇట్టే చేరుకొని హత్తుకుపోతుంది సముద్రంలో ఉన్న ఈ ద్వీపంలో అందమైన సముద్ర తీరాలు ఉప్పు నీటి మడుగులు ఇసుక తిన్నెలు రారమ్మంటూ పర్యాటకులను ఆకర్షిస్తాయి రాజధాని నగరం పోర్ట్ లూయిస్ గ్రాండ్ బేసిన్ గా పిలిచే గంగా తలావ్ పద్దెనిమిదవ శతాబ్దపు సర్ శివు సాగర్ రాంగులం బొటానికల్ గార్డెన్ కూడా మారిషస్ లోని ప్రధాన పర్యాటక ప్రాంతాలు ఇందాక సుదూరం నుండి కార్మల్ వాటర్ ఫాల్స్ అందాలు తిలకించి ఆస్వాదించాం కదా ఇప్పుడు ఇలా పొదలు గుట్టలు దాటుతూ మన ప్రయాణం ఎక్కడికో తెలుసా మరో అందమైన జలపాతం సొగసులు చూసేందుకు మారిషస్ లోని సురినామ్ లో ఉన్న రాచెస్టర్ వాటర్ ఫాల్స్ కి వెళ్తూ ఉంటే చక్కని ట్రెక్కింగ్ ఎక్స్పీరియన్స్ కలుగుతుంది నీటితో ఆటలాడుకోవాలనుకునే వారికి ఇది చక్కని ప్రదేశం ఇక్కడ నీటిలోకి దిగి ఈదవచ్చు ఏడు ప్రదేశాల నుండి నీటిలోకి దూకవచ్చు మారిషస్ లోని వాటర్ ఫాల్స్ అన్నింటిలోకి ఇది అందరికీ బాగా నచ్చేస్తుంది ఈ రాచెస్టర్ వాటర్ ఫాల్స్ టెన్ మీటర్స్ హైట్ లో ఉంటాయి ఇక్కడున్న రాక్స్ అన్ని ట్రయాంగిల్ షేప్ లో ఉంటాయి పైనుంచి నీళ్లు వేగంగా కిందికి పట్టడం వల్ల రాళ్ళకి ఆకారం వచ్చింది ఈ నీళ్లే జలపాతం నీళ్లు ఈ రివర్ దాటి వెళ్దాం పదండి చాలా వరకు ప్రకృతి సిద్ధమైన పర్యాటక ప్రాంతాల్లో పర్యాటకుల రద్దీ వల్ల వారికి సౌకర్యాల కల్పన కోసం చేసే నిర్మాణాల వల్ల అక్కడి సహజ సిద్ధమైన సౌందర్యం మరుగున పడిపోతుంది అయితే ఇక్కడ మాత్రం ఆ సహజత్వం అలానే పర్యాటకులను పలకరిస్తుంది ఎప్పుడు మీరు ఫాల్స్ ని కింద నుంచే చూసుంటారు ఇప్పుడు వాటర్ ఫాల్ ని పైన చూడండి ఇక్కడి రాళ్ల మీద కూర్చొని వాటర్ ఫాల్స్ చూస్తుంటే ఎంత హాయిగా ఉందో తెలుసా సిటీలో మనకిలాంటి ఎక్స్పీరియన్స్ దొరకదు నల్లని బండరాలను బాగా కడిగేసి తెల్లగా మార్చేయాలని కాబోలు ఇక్కడ నీటి ప్రవాహం తెగ ఆరాట పడిపోతూ పరుగులెడుతూ ఉంటుంది ఇక్కడ కిందికి వెళ్ళడానికి వే ఉంది ఆ వే అట్నుంచి వెళ్తే ఉంటుంది ఇక ఈ వాటర్ ఫాల్స్ ద్వారా తేలికగా కొబ్బరి బోండాల రవాణా కూడా జరిగిపోతుందండోయ్ అదెలాగో మీరే చూడండి ఇది కొండ ప్రాంతం కావడం వల్ల ఇక్కడ అనేక పనులు కూడా దొరుకుతాయి ఈ వారం విహారీలో అందమైన సెవెన్ కలర్డ్ ఎర్త్ తో పాటు బ్యూటిఫుల్ వాటర్ ఫాల్స్ కూడా చూసాం కదా నెక్స్ట్ వీక్ మళ్ళీ కలుద్దాం బాయ్చుట్టూ సముద్రమే కాని అది కూడా మధ్య మధ్యలో ఉండే వాటర్ ఫాల్స్ మాత్రమే చూస్తున్నాం అనుకుంటున్నారు కదూ అందుకే ఇప్పుడు మనం బీచ్ కి వెళ్ళిపోతున్నాం సూర్యోదయంలో కావచ్చు సూర్యాస్తమయంలో కావచ్చు కనుల నుండి గుండె వరకు నిండిపోయే అందాలు ఇక్కడే దాగున్నాయనిపిస్తుంది సూర్యాస్తమయిందంటే చాలు 
పర్యాటకులను ఆనంద డోలికల్లో ఉర్రూత లూగించేందుకు విద్యుత్ కాంతుల వెలుగు జిలుగులతో క్రూజ్లు సిద్ధమవుతాయి ఇక రెస్టారెంట్ల సంగతైతే చెప్పనే అక్కర్లేదు ఆ రాత్రికి మనల్ని స్వర్గతుల్యమైన విలాసాల్లో విహరింపచేయడానికి అన్ని ఏర్పాట్లు చేసేస్తాయి మనసుని మత్తెక్కించే క్యాండిల్ లైట్ డిన్నర్ సూపుకే కైపెక్కించే అనేక రకాల కలర్ఫుల్ వంటకాలు మనలోని స్పిరిట్ ని పెంచేసే డ్రింక్స్ అన్నిటికంటే మించి సముద్రపు అలల హోరులో కలగలిసే కొత్త స్వరాల సంగీతం ఇంతేనా ఇంకెన్నెన్నో మారిషస్ లో పర్యాటకుల డిన్నర్ టైం ని మాయేదో చేసి గమ్మత్తులో పడేస్తాయి ఈ అందాల విందుని నేనైతే ఆశాంతం ఆస్వాదిస్తాను అందుకే వచ్చే ఎపిసోడ్ వరకు మీ నుండి సెలవు కోరుకుంటున్నా మరి వచ్చే ఎపిసోడ్లో మారిషస్ లోని మరిన్ని అందమైన పర్యాటక ప్రాంతాల్లో కలుద్దాం అంతవరకు సెలవా మరి ఎక్స్చేంజ్ ఎనిమిది వేల రూపాయల బ్యాలెన్స్ మ్యామ్ ఇవ్వనక్కర్లేదమ్మా ఎనిమిది వేలు మీకే వస్తాయి ఎస్ మ్యామ్ మేము కేవలం హాల్ మార్క్ నైన్ వన్ సిక్స్ గోల్డ్ నే అమ్ముతాం ఇంకా మీకు దొరికింది హండ్రెడ్ పర్సెంట్ ఎక్స్చేంజ్ వాల్యూ క్వాలిటీ ఇది మలబార్ ప్రామిస్ ఇది మా హీరో అల్లుడు కోసం ఫిట్ గా ఉంటుంది పర్ఫెక్ట్ గా ఫిట్ అవుతుంది ఇది మైండ్ డైమండ్ హండ్రెడ్ పర్సెంట్ క్వాలిటీ సార్ ప్రతి మైండ్ డైమండ్ న్యాచురల్ ఇంకా మేము ఇరవై ఎనిమిది క్వాలిటీ టెస్ట్లు చేస్తాం ఇరవై ఎనిమిది టెస్ట్ల ప్రతి డైమండ్ జ్యువెలరీతో పాటు ఇంటర్నేషనల్ ల్యాబ్ సర్టిఫికేట్ కూడా కళ్ళు మూసుకుని మీ హీరో కోసం వజ్రాలను తీసుకోండి ఇది మలబార్ ప్రామిస్ more money in selling your home instead make more for all your real estate needs trust only lovi lovi realty group makes it easy to sell your home the lovi sale by owner offers the same services as a realtor does for a fraction of the price for only 990 dollars we list your home handle digital marketing take calls and schedule home showings for you planning to buy a house lovi has the best tools and agents to make your journey happy We offer home buyers rebate of 1% or more cash back towards the closing. Visit our website to learn more about our programs www.lovihomes.com. For more details, please contact 908-304-9621 or 908-337-1289.
Hello, viewers. I'm your host, Varsha Singh, for TV Asia Telugu Channel Healthline. Welcome again to our second episode with Dr. Priya Bala, who is an Ayurvedic practitioner for the past 20 years. We have introduced Dr. Priya Bala in our last episode, but I would like to introduce her again here. She has been practicing Ayurveda for the past 20 years. She has completed her BAMS, that is Bachelor's of Ayurvedic Medicine and Surgery degree from the prestigious Dr. MGR Medical University, Tamil Nadu, India. She has a graduate degree in psychology from University of Madras, India, and diploma in yoga and naturopathy. She also studied acupuncture and acupressure in CBIATC, Beijing, China. Again, I have to say that this is a World Health Organization accredited and recognized university. She also trained in Dr. Vora's acupressure under um, and in Dr. Ravindran Kannan of Bangalore. Her unique approach to health integrates the ancient wisdom of Ayurveda, Marma, which is energy points, acupressure, Siddha with naturopathic cleansing, healing, and relaxation through yoga and meditation. She is affiliated to SKY, which is Master Simplified Kundalini Yoga, uh, New Jersey chapter. She is also director of association, she is membership director of Association of Ayurvedic Professionals of North America. She is also research scientist at WISE, which is World Institute of Scientific Exploration, Maryland, USA, and IUYA faculty, which is International University of Yoga and Ayurveda which is in Salt Springs, Florida. So again, it is such a great pleasure to have you, Dr. Priya Bala, Vaidya Priya Bala. Uh, namaste, Namaste, Vashaji, and thank you for having me here. And my sincere thanks to TV Asia channel also. Uh, this is a great venture to propagate Ayurveda to our community. And I'm very glad to be here with you today. Thank so, you, Vashaji. You're welcome. Uh, it's our pleasure as well. In last episode, we talked about uh, Panchakarma, uh, we, mm -hmm. which was a great way to explain our viewers what exactly is Panchakarma, because a lot of uh, viewers may have heard of this terminology, but because they really don't know what it entails, they may not have even made an appointment or consulted someone. So maybe some of our viewers have seeked out an Ayurvedic practitioner, hopefully, and looked forward to having the Panchakarmas. Uh, I, we are going to discuss something different today, which is going to be almost um, what um, uh, our um, another Ayurvedic practitioner, Hari, had given us an insight into practical yoga. So today, we are going to look into what is the application of Ayurveda in certain diseased conditions. So if I have to ask you as an experienced Ayurvedic practitioner, if you can give us an insight into how Ayurveda can be used into all those different disease conditions uh, can be acute or chronic. So Ayurveda is applied uh, in the US mostly for pain conditions uh, like low back pain and neck pain, um, even with the disc prolapse, uh, and those uh, pain conditions and then it is applied in seasonal allergies and a lot of lifestyle conditions like diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol and so on and also in hormone imbalance conditions like thyroid disease and so on. So the application of Ayurveda is really wide and in all these conditions we use herbs, lifestyle changes, yoga exercises, and breathing practices. We incorporate everything that is needed uh, to help our clients. Yeah. So mm -hmm. 
this is something that you have explained in a broad sense. While you are taking care of any conditions, maybe it is seasonal allergy, maybe it is chronic pain, maybe it is a lifestyle disease, and we will go over each of them in detail as we go further. So the basic criteria is that first you will do what is known as a dosha analysis. Yes. And then you will have uh, their prakriti. They will also, you will also consider all other modalities. And then you will pick a plan which is suitable for their uh, individual needs. So uh, how would you define that it is a personalized plan before we go into the discussion of the diseases itself? Yeah, so in the last three episodes, uh, we discussed about the Prakruti. Each person has a very unique constitution. So this constitution comprises of three things, Vata, Pitta, Kapha, and their unique balance for each of us. And this balance is innate throughout life. And it changes only when there are seasonal changes and age, it's related to age, and even day and night. Some days in the morning, there is a different doshic predominance. In the noontime, there is a different doshic predominance. And in the evening, it is different for the same person. And it differs seasonally, and it differs according to age. So this uniqueness is very innate to each individual. So there is no cookie cutter method of choosing a particular treatment for an individual. So each person needs to be assessed and then given what is appropriate for them. Whether it's the herbs, the changes or a panchakarma, it has to be designed for their individual prakriti. So it's really important to clarify this with our viewers because every person may think that they can just go out and get the same kind of Ayurvedic treatment, which is most of the time there are a lot of products available all over. And this is really important to share that every Ayurvedic management is personalized and individual. So here we are actually experiencing just uh, winter is ending, spring has started. And, you know, when the weather opens up, when the flowers bloom and everything is green and then the birds and bees and everything is out. Everyone enjoys that, right? But at the same time, it's really common to see seasonal allergies. People are coughing and sneezing all over. So these seasonal allergies due to pollen are very common, especially uh, in United States of America, because geographically how the wind pattern is. So people do get... Um, immunization they prepare themselves for with flu shots and so many I think there is a huge industry of over-the-counter medicine Mm -hmm. uh, to treat uh, these seasonal allergies which is I would say it it sounds like it is just seasonal allergy but it can completely incapacitate someone uh, because of the sneezing because of the headache and so many other things foggy brain um so how does ayurveda um, address these seasonal allergies all right so let's take this scenario okay uh, two people are walking in a garden so <laughs> there are flowers blooming and this two persons are exposed to the same environment where the pollen is same they breathe the same air and everything is uh equal for both of them, the environmental factors, but one person sneezes, another does not. One person itches in the eye, another does not. So what is the difference between these two is one is able to tolerate their body's immune system is very good. So it is able to tolerate the allergens and safely eliminate it. Whereas the other one's immune system is not up to the mark. And it kind of rejects all this and it immediately reacts to the pollen or whatever environmental allergens there are in that particular environment. 
So when you look at this scenario, the main aim of the Ayurvedic treatment would be not to stop the sneeze or not to give something to immediately stop the symptoms, but to improve the immune system of that person, which is very, very important because the immune system stands up to tolerate and effectively handle the pollen or the allergen at that point of time. So that would be our approach. And the second uh, way to look at this is uh, our body always wants to eliminate what it does not want to keep inside. So when you sneeze or when there is watering in the eyes, it is trying to eliminate something that has gone inside, which the system does not want to stay inside. So by suppressing the symptom, we are still keeping the allergen inside the body and just stopping the tearing or the running nose or stopping the sneeze. And then the disease or discomfort stays inside and it leads way to another disease. So these are the two main concepts, I would say, in which Ayurveda is a little different in approaching this seasonal allergy. So um, in other words, uh, if I just correct me if I'm wrong, you will not give something to put in the eyes that will kind of relieve the itching of the eyes or inhale something that will stop the nose from, from running nose or someone if they are having some swelling or the hives, it's not going to be in local application. So the approach would be something that will actually inherently help or boost their uh, immune system to eliminate the, or to help them deal with their allergies in a better manner. Correct, correct. So we do uh, encourage to use uh, some herbal waters, to wash the eyes, saline to wash the nose, like doing gel neti and gargling with saline. We do encourage all those, but we also give herbs that will actually boost their immune system in a good way to deal with these things. Wonderful. So I, I'm sure we see a lot of children. This mm -hmm. is our pediatric population uh, who is affected by these seasonal allergies a lot. And sometimes uh, we consider it because they are younger at age and now they are being exposed to all these new allergens. We see a lot of uh, allergic reaction in this pediatric population. So how do you see a lot of children in your practice and how do you treat them? Yes, Varshaji. So 50% of our clientele is uh, the pediatric population. And uh, they do have a lot of allergies not only seasonal allergies even other allergies like food allergies and things like that so um, the way we approach this is the similar way as we approach the adults except the herbal dosage and the herbs that we choose for them will be a little different and uh, we do something called nasyam which we discussed in the last episode nasal drops and they'll be in a smaller dose for kids because they give a good lining uh, in the nostrils uh, to effectively eliminate the pollen that goes inside, eliminate the irritation that happens because of the pollen. And it also strengthens the mucosal tract in the nasopharynx and the pharynx and so on. And uh, the kids, because of their age and they are growing, the effect is amazing for them. The healing happens so quickly. So we are very happy about that. So that generates a little bit of question in my mind. And if you can share, uh, I have heard about the way you explain nasium, right? So I know that it is an individual herb for every person, but can you share some of the common uh, herbal remedies that you use for this uh, therapy? Yeah, for the kids, it's naturally homemade organic ghee itself will be good for nasium. Uh, because we don't want to give them strong herbs to put in the nose. And mm -hmm. sometimes it is even sesame oil, uh, which is, uh, you know, heated and cooled with certain herbs at home. 
and there are a few oils for nasim that are available in the market which we choose according to the prakriti so to clarify further mm -hmm. the ayurvedic oils are different from the essential oils or they are one and the same they are very very different from essential oils we don't do nasim with essential oils at all essential oils are normally used in steam and you inhale the uh, fumes coming from there but in ayurveda the oils that go directly in the nose uh -huh. so the way it is administered is entirely different thank you so much for clarifying that because sometimes it's really difficult uh, there are so many therapies around us it's very difficult for many of those who are not really into the medical profession to discriminate between whether ar aromatherapy is a different science itself from um, ayurvedic uh, nasi therapy so question comes here again uh, this pediatric patients who come to you for their allergies how do you treat them if they are already on some different medications i'm sure they will be taking some different medications at the same time so how does it work so kids that have allergies and asthma they are already on inhalers nebulizers with the different medications prescribed by their pediatricians but they use it as and when needed but when they are on the herbs when they start this herbal protocol with us slowly they find there is no need to use the inhalers or the nebulizers because the lung capacity increases and uh, they feel a lot better and the infections go low and low at frequent infection the frequency they have to take antibiotics all this is gone it becomes really low there is no need uh, for very intensive treatments like that for them because their immune system grows with the herbs and if there are they are a little bit older kids then we teach them some breathing exercises which they learn it's done in 5 minutes and they can do it at home and uh, they do that and the lung capacity really increases with the breathing exercises because the main aim is to get more prana or mm -hmm. you know in simple words you can translate it loosely to oxygen so they get a lot of prana into their system so their system is able to effectively fight against whatever you know external factors Yeah. so you not only treat them for their acute conditions but then you also teach them uh, this uh, preventative kind of uh, ayurvedic practice which will prevent probably the future attacks yes so that exactly is my next question coming to you that when they come for their allergies when you are treating them with ayurvedic medicine uh, what are the other preventative uh, therapies that you suggest them and how can they prevent the future attacks of allergies yes so when they start doing the breathing exercises their lung capacity gradually increases with their growth and they are able to tolerate more allergens and they don't immediately react to that and then the immune system becomes very strong and we do uh, guide them using food guidelines so there are certain foods that we ask them not to take and certain foods we ask them to take while uh, which varies according to the seasons so say it is a fall season or spring season when the weather is normally windy cloudy or rainy so that time uh, the effect of outside weather on the body is so intense that your body keeps changing adjusting from the winter to summer or from the summer to winter and this is a phase where it's vulnerable to allergies so in this phase we ask them to eat very light easily digestible and warm foods and we ask them to use some nice immune boosting herbs like turmeric black pepper and holy basil in their teas probably you know so these are very good herbs and there is one more concept in ayurveda which is called body heat mm -hmm. so this body heat is not the heat that your thermometer can measure mm -hmm. so if you touch the hands of one person it is warm and another person it is cold 
Mm-hmm. But when you check the temperature of these two people using a thermometer, it would be ninety-eight point four. That's interesting. Okay. Yes, and one says I feel cold all the time, and one says I feel hot all the time. I don't like blankets. Mm-hmm. One person wants the AC up, air cooler up, and the other one wants the heat up. Mm-hmm. So this difference we see in kids and adults alike. So this is two different conditions. This heat body person is more vulnerable to conditions where there is a lot of mucus accumulation is in the head, and they get frequent sinus infections. eye irritation nose block mm-hmm. dry throat dry nose itching in the ears everything in the symptoms of the head this other category person who feels cold all the time they get chest cold lung cold wheezing and all this so this both conditions have to be treated with different herbs so normally mm-hmm. what we do when you have a allergy oh i know pepper is good for allergy Uh-huh. Turmeric is good for allergy, so let me take turmeric, black pepper, and everything. So when this heat body person takes these herbs, it further increases the heat, and the problem doesn't go away. In fact, it may get slightly aggravated, uh-huh. and then they tend to herbs don't work. So, so we have to uh, actually balance heat of that person. and then go for other treatment that's that's yeah. actually really interesting uh, that the same uh, herbal uh, compound or the herbal medicine will not have the same effect based on their own body heat and it's really interesting that the temperature taken has nothing to do with this body heat that you talked about so it also gives another perspective to our viewers uh when they are trying to seek the ayurvedic management for their complaints so going further um uh, we will we talked about the seasonal allergies and your approach about seasonal allergies and the preventative modality uh, that can be used to prevent for the attacks of allergy another chronic condition and i would say sometimes it is acute as well there is one condition that it's really difficult to actually address and treat um and here we are talking about pain mm-hmm. nobody wants to stay uh, in the status of pain as soon as someone has little pain they will be looking for a medicine in their medicine cabinet um acute pain and then gradually when this pain becomes constant uh, i'm sure that you are seeing a lot of patient coming to you uh, and i'm sure you have treated so how do you manage these patients and i uh, in my experience um and in my clinical experience i have seen that chronic pain does not just affect the physical aspect of the body it has also a lot of impact uh, psychological and, and the mental health so it's it's a, something that is really um uh significant in the population a lot of viewers are suffering and i would really appreciate if you can uh, give your perspective uh, about how and what ayurveda has to offer and what are the most common chronic pain types that you treat yeah so we see both acute and chronic pain conditions in our center a few examples would be uh, neck pain and low back pain which involves a disc prolapse okay so these patients they have already gone to different therapies modalities available to them through their doctors so they have gone for physiotherapy they have gone for pain medicine they have gone for steroid shots and they will come to ayurveda looking for a solution only when they are suggested surgery as a last resort for that condition because the pain did not so when they come we are able to help these conditions with the varmakalai and the marma points which help in immediate pain relief so the patient is motivated and 
they trust that okay this pain can be solved without surgery so that is what this marma and varmakala i can give on the day one itself and then they follow certain exercises and certain rules and regulations in the diet and finally they get rid of the pain and there is a whole panchakarma designed for them a minimum of 7 days to help them with that condition uh, to relieve get relieved of that pain so there are other types of pain uh, like rheumatoid arthritis and other uh, autoimmune conditions where the joints and muscles are affected so we say it's in that category too whereas the treatment protocol will be different for them because there the pain uh, relief starts from correcting the digestion in the first place mm-hmm. so once so, we correct the digestion and eliminate the toxins then only they see improvement in the pain and we see osteoarthritis and all different kind of conditions uh, tendinitis and uh, and so on so uh, thank you dr priya wala uh, just for our viewers clarification mm-hmm. uh, i want to say this that if there is uh, dislocation or any those conditions of the bones uh, fractures etc it definitely needs to have the emergency management first and you as a practitioner and i as a practitioner we agree that anything that is an emergent condition always seek the emergency care because that's where the patient needs to go uh, in case of any kind of dislocation or fracture and here what we are talking about chronic pain is something that you have pain for years and you have not had relief with any other modalities right and this is an important part to share because we just want to make sure that the viewers have the right understanding correct so if i have to ask you do you see any particular age group uh coming to you for this pain management or you have different different age groups and what are the most common conditions that uh, you have been seeing in your practice oh previously 10 years ago whenever there is a condition with joint or a, a cervical problem or a disc problem it will be always 50 plus that would come for this conditions but later in the past decade what we are continuously seeing is there are more and more youngsters and students and we know why come for we know why <laughs> yes they're constantly sitting on the desk and uh, they don't have a proper posture sitting down they are slouching or they are lying down and reading books or watching the computer or playing games so this is the posture challenge that causes the pain for them and more and more youngsters in their 20s and 30s are suffering from back pain and neck pain nowadays yeah isn't that um, a fact that we need to kind of go back to our lifestyle a little bit um, the way we are progressing everything is done through machines computers and these are also known as the new lifestyle diseases in younger generation so thank you for sharing this um going further what did you find common in all these conditions that you have treated and i'm sure in your more than 20 years practice you have that um, summary in your head that i know my patient i know why, where this chronic pain is coming from it will really help our viewers yeah so two things uh, that is most common for this whole population is number one lack of exercise and there is no movement so we would recommend that you get up and walk a few steps while you're working while you're on the phone you can hold your phone walk and attend a phone call or something like that and increase the exercise factor more and the second one is even though you're sitting in one place and doing the work still we eat the same amount of food that we used to eat when you are running around so there is no enough physical activity but the input is the same so there is a lot of bloating and gas that happens in your digestive system and this bloating and gas actually increases the pain factor in the muscles 
So these two are most common that we see in our patient group. Exchange? Yenmi duvel rupayla balance ma'am. Oh. Yuvana kharleda ma. Yenmi duvelu meke vastayi. Yes ma'am. Meun kevalo on Hallmark 916 gold ne amutau. Inka meku dorkindi 100% exchange value. Wow. Quality. Idi Malabar promise. New Jersey lo illu konalani kaani ammalani kaani anukuntunnara? మీ నమ్మకమైన నేస్తంగా మీ ఇంటి క్రయ విక్రయాలను చేసి పెడుతోంది మీ లోవి రియల్టీ గ్రూప్ వేలాది డాలర్ల మీ కష్టార్ జీతాన్ని ఎంతో విలువైన సమయాన్ని ఆదా చేస్తూ కేవలం తొమ్మిది వందల తొంభై డాలర్ల నామమాత్ర ఫీజుతో ఖచ్చితమైన సంతృప్తికరమైన లావాదేవీలను చేసి పెట్టే రియల్ ఏజెన్సీ లోవి అంతేకాదు మీరు కొన్న ఇంటి మీద మినిమం వన్ పర్సెంట్ క్యాష్ బ్యాక్ మీ క్లోజింగ్ కాస్ట్ లో పొందగలరు మరిన్ని వివరాలకు ప్లీజ్ విజిట్ డబ్ల్యూ 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 డాట్ లోవి హోమ్స్ డాట్ కాం కాంటాక్ట్ నైన్ జీరో ఎయిట్ త్రీ జీరో ఫోర్ నైన్ సిక్స్ టూ వన్ ఆర్ నైన్ జీరో ఎయిట్ డబల్ త్రీ సెవెన్ వన్ టూ ఎయిట్ నైన్ న్యూజెర్సీలో ఇల్లు కొనాలని కాని అమ్మాలని కాని అనుకుంటున్నారా మీ నమ్మకమైన నేస్తంగా మీ ఇంటి క్రయ విక్రయాలను చేసి పెడుతోంది మీ లోవి రియల్టీ గ్రూప్ వేలాది డాలర్ల మీ కష్టార్ జీతాన్ని ఎంతో విలువైన సమయాన్ని ఆదా చేస్తూ కేవలం తొమ్మిది వందల తొంభై డాలర్ల నామమాత్ర ఫీజుతో ఖచ్చితమైన సంతృప్తికరమైన లావాదేవీలను చేసి పెట్టే రియల్ ఏజెన్సీ లోవి అంతేకాదు మీరు కొన్న ఇంటి మీద మినిమం వన్ పర్సెంట్ క్యాష్ బ్యాక్ మీ క్లోజింగ్ కాస్ట్ లో పొందగలరు మరిన్ని వివరాలకు ప్లీజ్ విజిట్ డబ్ల్యూ 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 డాట్ లోవి హోమ్స్ డాట్ కాం కాంటాక్ట్ నైన్ జీరో ఎయిట్ త్రీ జీరో ఫోర్ నైన్ సిక్స్ టూ వన్ ఆర్ నైన్ జీరో ఎయిట్ డబల్ త్రీ సెవెన్ వన్ టూ ఎయిట్ నైన్ Thank you so much for sharing um, your perspective of how this chronic pain is uh, associated with how we sit and how is our lifestyle. So when you said that our chronic pain is partly because of our lifestyle and some chronic pain is associated uh, with the seasonal changes. So if you can um advise our viewers what precautions can be taken for this kind of chronic pains and if you could give some examples okay so as we discussed earlier when the seasons change from winter to summer and summer to winter which is exactly the spring season and fall season the body undergoes a fluid change so there it is more vulnerable to pain conditions so at that time if we could eat warm foods easily digestible foods instead of heavy high fat and high protein food you eat simple and make it easy for the system to digest it so that the immune system will have enough energy to keep itself up to the mark so that is number 1 and we have to resort to some kind of yoga or any exercise practices like pranayam or whatever is your exercise of choice without exerting too much because ayurveda always warns ag- against too much exertion so whichever is suitable for your body type you choose that kind of exercise and keep sticking to a routine during the seasons it's very important to be on an exercise routine and to be on a simple diet regimen during this seasonal changes so that will help to prevent any chronic pain that happens in the system so if i had to uh, just clarify what you said um uh, in warm weather you said eat simple diet uh, which is not very spicy so in other words uh, avoid the tamasi kind of food which is very spicy which is very oily or fried and a yeah. simple diet 
and i wanted to definitely ask you about a uh, very popular food which is very soothing to our system and now it is getting really popular in the western side of our population uh, we call it khichdi or pongal in uh, you know it the name varies from northern region to southern region of india but it is just a simple mixture of the uh, rice and lentil with a little bit of salt and turmeric yeah khichdi is the simplest form of food that your system can process and digest and it's the perfect balance of carbohydrate protein and fat with the right amount of spices so the consistency of the khichdi also matters because when you have really low digestion meaning how do you know when you have little di- digestion is less is you don't have an appetite to eat mm mm-hmm. you don't have an appetite means you don't have enough enzymes to receive the food right so in mm-hmm. that condition you eat a more watery form of khichdi which you can otherwise call a porridge porridge yes so, so um, if you have a good appetite then you can eat the actual khichdi yeah. so yeah. you are saying listen to your body yes if it is not hungry don't eat that's the, it's the simplest way to put it right correct and, then someone will say aha how much should i eat should i eat khichdi for like one month or one week you know they have all these questions um so what would you recommend the seasonal changes from winter to spring spring to summer uh what would you advise if someone asked you this question how long should i be eating this kind of diet so if you let a person eat khichdi for one whole month they are going to get depressed <laughs> 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 so there are a lot of food choices that are simple to digest uh, mm-hmm. a rice porridge a millet porridge with boiled vegetables with different seasonings and there are so many seasonal vegetables that you can choose from and uh, they can be spiced up to make their qualities suitable for that person's body and you can make it really tasty also Yeah. okay simple doesn't mean it's not tasty and there are so many choices and fruits are also there and mm-hmm. in one of our last episodes we discussed we do not eat raw food and cooked food together which is one of the important reasons for indigestion and bloating so we separate the raw foods and we separate the cooked foods from each other so that is very very important in the management of pain as well so you made a really uh, great point because if you look at um, how the food is served here the first serving is uh, always a vegetable salad with dressing and then comes the main entree which is protein if you go to a typical uh, american restaurant it will be meat and some uh, mashed potato side and then the th- it will be either soup and then they will serve you a dessert like right, to end it and some kind of drinks together so it's really important uh what you said separating raw food from cooked food and again i'm sure you have individualized um elimination or addition diet for each individual because again it is not a general rule uh, that everyone eats the same kind of food varsha ji how big is our stomach <laughs> i i think i would say it is this small <laughs> okay so you have a bag that can hold 1 pound of some substance okay and you are trying to feed 3 pounds of substance into that bag how long will the bag last the capacity is 1 pound but it can expand of course but as we age and we see this condition in younger kids where they have irritable bowel syndrome they have mm-hmm. crohn's and so many other conditions where they cannot hold the food that goes in the system and immediately after meals they have to use the bathroom okay so this simply means you are feeding more into the bag than it can hold so the amount of food that goes inside how you are feeding your system is very important so that is why we have to chew the food really well make it easy for the bag to hold and absorb 
so that chewing is a very important component and we don't drink water along with the meal and for the same reason we don't want to do raw food and cooked food together because the digestion time for these foods are totally different and as you said if you go to a restaurant they are giving you four meals together for a normal person soup can be a meal salad can be another meal and your main course which is protein or rice or beans can be another meal so you are trying to feed three or four meals at the same meal time and if we keep on doing this for a long time you are actually inviting disease to the system because you have only so much enzymes to break down the food so when we are younger we don't feel the uh, pinch but as we grow older the enzymes start drying up so we'll have to really look at the way we eat and the quantity we eat so the the point you made just now uh, it reminds me of um, uh, what uh, parishi had said in earlier uh, episode about being mindful mm-hmm. and being really mindful is looking at the food chewing well understanding what you are putting in your mouth so again we are emphasizing that to our viewers and that again brings us to the eating right the way we eat our food and what's our diet made of brings us to again to the same point of discussion of lifestyle diseases such as diabetes high cholesterol and high blood pressure so if we can discuss about this lifestyle diseases according to ayurveda what are the underlying causes so you uh you talked about three diseases diabetes high cholesterol and high blood pressure for example so the underlying cause for all these three if you want to say in one word the first reason is imbalance in the eating pattern so imbalance in the intake and expenditure so that ratio is broken nowadays so how much energy you get from the food you must be able to spend it but there is no enough work that we do to spend the energy so this is going in and it's partially digested and it can cause a big list of conditions with different names that can affect the body in different ways yeah so so dr priya bala you you are just um, proving the point that we are what we eat mm. <laughs> so uh, if you can just give us a little bit more uh, explanation about what role does diet play in all these conditions and does panchakarma as an ayurvedic detoxification uh, detoxification therapy help in all these lifestyle diseases yes that's a very good question varsha ji so um diet as you said we are what we eat right only if you can digest it okay so if you eat something which has a certain quantity of carbohydrate fat and protein you need certain enzymes to be ready in your digestive system for example liver enzymes and from the pancreas you need the insulin and there are so many other enzymes that are ready to receive what you put in there to break it down and release energy from there so now i am a fast eater for example i eat really fast okay i swallow and then now the stomach is full of food that has not been chewed so now breaking down the great protein and fat is entirely the responsibility of the enzymes that these organs have to secrete say for example i chewed my food really well and you know very well that there are enzymes in the saliva there is still in that can help break down the 
carbohydrate right here in your mouth and the organ for taste which is the tongue it has all the taste receptors so you have to enjoy the taste of each bite of food in the mouth and we are given 32 teeth to chew the food really well not to just sit in and swallow so in fact e order should not be had fast so there is a proverb is drink your food and eat your water so drink your food in the sense you chew the food so that it becomes liquid and then you drink it and chew the water it means that you keep the water in the mouth enough time and then you swallow it slowly so now what happens when you did enough work in the mouth and swallow food very less enzymes are enough to take energy from that food which has already been digested in the mouth so now you have the insulin and the other enzymes saved for a longer span in your life so they will work well until you grow very old <laughs> otherwise what happens in the 30s 40s you say you know insulin says i i have no more insulin to secrete i'm done so there are so many people who are insulin dependent diabetics you know so many people with problems with liver enzymes fatty liver you know sluggish liver and so on so all this can be corrected only if you change the way you eat the herbs come only after you make this primary change without making this change whatever herbs you give will correct the problem only to a certain extent and not eliminate it altogether so that is why we emphasize so much on this so what is diabetes it is lack of insulin and when you make your teeth and the jaw muscles work really well then your dependency on insulin is less and your body has enough energy to wake up and the second is high cholesterol where the transformation of food is not proper everything transforms to fat and it stays right there in the blood vessels or you know leading to obesity where it is there in the body tissues so this can also be corrected with correction of diet and also doing some yoga or incorporating any physical exercise routine into our daily uh, regimen yeah that was my next question for you that mm-hmm. along with detoxification mm-hmm. uh, how yoga and pranayama both can help this lifestyle diseases yes yoga and pranayama are always given as a follow up after the panchakarma is done so as we discussed earlier panchakarma is done only for the people who need a little more help in putting their system back to balance if the person is already active and is younger in age and they are able to do the lifestyle changes themselves there is no need for panchakarma but if they need a little more push you know they need a little help because they are too much loaded with the toxins which is called ama in ayurveda then we give them and we undergo a seven day process of panchakarma so that the toxins are eliminated through the skin through the gut through the movements and everything and they feel a little lighter so the herbs can be better absorbed in the system right so as a follow up after the panchakarma we give them a yoga and pranayama routine so that the effect of panchakarma stays for a long time as long as the body is active and each and every muscle is worked out working out doesn't mean going and running on a treadmill or going to a gym lifting weights doesn't mean that keeping every muscle active is taking energy to each and every cell in the body and there are easy techniques to do that that we teach so mm-hmm. those can be done as a everyday routine to keep up the effect of panchakarma so uh, when you said um, this yoga and pranayama practice um, they can do it every day uh, can someone do it even when they are at work yes yes they can do at work if they have a short break lunch break or something just before starting to eat they can do 5 minutes of pranayama they can do 5 minutes of yoga you know, and like also, chair exercises 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And also I had uh, this, um, I'm asking for our viewers that the good eating habit or the good way to eat their food, the way you explain, not necessary that it is only um, advice for the patients who already have diabetes or high cholesterol or high blood pressure. Uh, this can be done as a routine to prevent these lifestyle diseases as well, correct? Perfectly said, uh, Varsha ji. Then that is what we want every one of us to do. It is a preventive practice and it can help prevent so many diseases. For example, high blood pressure, your heart has to pump the blood so hard. It has to work so hard. So it has to pump and circulate the blood. So when does it become very hard for the heart to pump the blood when the blood consistency is too thick, when there is too much water accumulation in the body? So there are so many conditions where your heart has to pump really hard, right? So when you eat right, it keeps the consistency of the blood in a very stable way. So it actually reduces the load of the heart and it's pumping action and the pressure comes down. Yeah. So I, I am thinking uh, and uh, I'm going to ask you, how do you answer to your patients when they say, I'm very busy, I have no time, I really don't know how to do this with my extremely busy life and I have only 10 minutes to eat my food. Uh, what would you advise them? So I would start with a question whether they want to be healthy or not. Okay. If they choose to be healthy, then they have to spend 10 or 15 minutes to eat with awareness and follow all the food rules. So we have some doctors as our clients as well. You know, they're extremely busy like surgeons and stuff like that they have to just run in gulp something and come out I used to suggest rather than swallowing your food so fast you rather take a liquid juice or a smoothie if you don't have enough time to eat the food it is more harmful to eat a solid food without chewing and swallowing a long term you get all symptoms of acidity heartburn migraines and so on but If you drink a smoothie, you know that you have only 10 minutes and you cannot sit down and eat. Go for a more liquid or semi-liquid diet, which you can slurp that to try to slurp slowly. Okay. And then that would do more benefit than eating fast and swallowing solid food. Mm -hmm. You can try that and you will see a difference. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And you would also advise it at the room temperature, not very ice cold or not very hot, correct? The basic rule of Ayurveda is not to eat cool food. And the basic rule of Ayurveda is energy. So your body would spend so much energy bringing that food into your body temperature and then spend more energy breaking and digesting that food. So if you give your food warm, lukewarm or room temperature, It saves energy for you. And Ayurveda is about longevity. So Mm -hmm. you want to save your enzymes for a very long time so that you live happily in the system, (laughs) in this body. Okay, so... Mm -hmm. Very well said that we all want to live within our body happily. Yes. That's the essence of Ayurveda I'm feeling right now. So thank you so much for sharing your expertise about seasonal allergies, chronic pain, uh, and the lifestyle diseases like diabetes, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol. I'm sure there are many other uh, conditions that you have treated um, in your practice, and you are treating right now uh, at your center in New Brunswick in New Jersey. Uh, I look forward to having another interesting conversation in our upcoming episode Uh, which is actually I'm looking forward to. And for our viewers, um, we want you to come back to us and listen to us because this is uh, our episode that you really don't want to miss. Uh, I want to thank you, Dr. Priyabala, Priyabala, for uh, coming on Healthline 
on TV Asia Telugu channel. I learned a lot from you. Uh, I am sure our viewers have learned a lot uh, today in this episode about what you want to do if you have any of these conditions and if you are looking at Ayurveda as your management uh, medicine. So continue to watch um, Healthline on TV Asia Telugu channel. Uh, remember what uh, Dr. Priya Bala said that you want to be happy in your body. And how to do it, we explained in this episode. Uh, we will be back again with some more tips that you can use in your life uh, for day to day, uh, improving your health and continue to live a healthy lifestyle and enjoy the quality of life that you are living. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vashaji. Thank you. Thank you. So right now I will say bye for now, but I will see you again in our next episode of Healthline on TV Asia Telugu channel. Stay well and enjoy your life.
తెలుసుకున్నాము <laughs> కొత్త విషయాలు తెలుసుకున్నాము తెలిసిన విషయాలు తెలుసుకున్నాము అంటే అసలు మనకి ఏ మాత్రం మనకి టచ్ లేని చాలా సబ్జెక్ట్ కూడా తెలుసుకున్నాము మనం ఏ రకంగా స్ట్రాటజీస్ అప్లై చేసి ఆ ట్యాక్స్ బెనిఫిట్ తెచ్చుకోవచ్చు అని చెప్పి 